So how do you find out an amino acid's net charge? How do you find out the amino acid's net charge when you place them in a particular pH? We need to find it out. How do you do that? Let's see that in a moment. So for that, you need to understand this, term, this idea of amino acid titration. So what we mean by that? First, try to understand this very clearly. First, we'll discuss about a simple amino acid. Let's assume that is glycine or something. One example we already saw. Let's saw that example. We didn't take R into consideration or R group into consideration because we consider R as hydrogen, which is present in glycine. R has nothing to do. But there are amino acids which are positively charged, like lysine, right? And arginine. But there are also amino acids which are negatively charged, R group, glutamic acid, aspartic acid. So for them, the titration curve will be different. So the more difficult titration curve will be seen in case of lysine, arginine, histidine, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. And these are the five which you need to prepare for CCRnet. Okay? If you practice one, rest of them will be clear. But how need to do it? Let's see that. But before that, let's talk about the rule. Imagine one simple, let's talk about a simple idea. What we are seeing here is that we are considering a relationship between a pH and pK values, the pK values of a amino acids. pK value means basically for individual group, the pK values are mentioned. So pK1, pK2, if there is no charged R group, there is only two pK, pK1 and pK2. One is for the COOH, another one is NH2. And the second, and, and if there is R group charged, lysine, arginine, histidine, uh, aspartic acid, glutamic acid, then there is another pK for the R group. So there are pKa1, pKa2 and then is pKa R for the R group. Okay. Now the idea stated is that let's assume the amino acid is present. I'll draw amino acid like this. I'll simply focus on this uh, situation. Let's say the amino acid is placed in an acidic environment. In an acidic environment means the pH is very low. So pH is 2, very acidic environment. So in low pH, what happens? Proton is filled. The environment is filled with protons. So what will happen? CO minus, let's say CO minus was the acid group. It will be protonated. And if there is NH2, which is amino group, it will be protonated to NH3 plus. So what happens if we put an enzyme or if you put an uh, uh, amino acid in an acidic environment, due to the high proton concentration in the acidic environment, it will always try to protonate all the groups. Be it CO, be it NH2, be it R group, it will try to protonate it. Okay. So what we can say, decrease pH. So that means if the pH is lower than pKa, then protonation will be higher. Logical, clear. Now, if we increase the pH or make the environment al like basic or alkali, so the pK is less than pH, then there will be reversal of that. Deprotonation will begin. Why? Because less proton is present in the environment. So COH will lose proton. NHC plus will lose proton and if R group has a proton, it will also lose it. So it will be deprotonation. This thing you need to print in your brain. If the pH is less than pK, more protonation. pK is less than pH, more deprotonation. Just remember one thing, rest you will understand is reverse. So pH is less than pKa, means acidic pH, more protonation. You don't need to mug it up, you know. Acidic pH means what? More proton is present, so more protonation. As simple as that. So now surrounding environment has negative charge. <laughs> if the surrounding environment has negative charge, then the pKa increases. And if the surrounding environment has positive charge, then the pKa decreases. This is another angle that you need to remember. But generally they don't ask any question from this one. They ask question from this angle only. But still, I put it both. PH PK relationship, you know, but if the environment is negatively charged, PK will increase. If the environment has positively charged, PK will decrease.
कौन खंडर पीके देखो अगर देखो सराउंडिंग एनवायरनमेंट इज नेगेटिव चार्ज इंक्रीज इन पीके इफ इंक्रीज इन पीके पीके इज ग्रेटर देन पी जो इंक्रीज इन पीके मींस व्हाट नेगेटिव चार्ज मींस व्हाट एनवायरनमेंट नेगेटिव चार्ज मींस लेस प्रोटॉन लेस प्रोटॉन मींस व्हाट मोर ओएच माइनस एग्जांपल इन दैट सेंस सो इंक्रीज पीएच सो पीएच इंक्रीज इन पीके सो इंक्रीज इन पीके वैल्यू द सेम दिस सेम रिलेशनशिप इज रिटर्न इन द opposite way from a pk's perspective and from a like a charge perspective that's the idea from a charge perspective or when a negative charge equals to what acidity or basic basic environment okay negative charge equals to basic environment and basic environment means deprotonation okay and positive charge means acidic environment and that is more with protonation clear now let's understand the process of titration this is one example of titration given i'll talk about this then i'll give you one example problem later on at the end try to solve okay so titration curve of glutamic acid from glutamic where r group also involved in the process of uh, the protonation and deprotonation so in this kind of situation what we need to know we need to know three pk values pk1 2 and 3 pk1 that is pk for carboxylic acid co that one 2.2 pk2 for r group 4.3 pk3 for amino group 9.7 and the pi you need to calculate so the formula to calculate pi or what is pi isolatric points is pk1 plus pk2 by 2 but there are three pk which two pk you need to choose to find out the isolatric point this is the most important question This is the most important topic that you need to find. That is the part of the job that you need to do. In this example, you saw that they took only this and this, not this, this or not this, this. Only two point two with four point three to get the answer. Why they do that? There's a logic behind it. Because we need to find out a state, Zwitterionic state of the amino acid, where the net charge is zero. That means at that present time, one plus and one minus groups are there. so let's begin with the glutamic acid at very acidic so the titration says we start with acidic so what we see in the in this titration curve we have ph on the y axis and we have hydroxyl concentration oh minus concentration in the x axis oh minus ph the more we increase ph oh minus increases this is how the graph is meant okay now what we see increase in ph and we are trying to see how exactly they come out so this is glutamic acid to start with okay see in this glutamic acid at this ph that is ph2 let's say ph2 now what we do we compare this pk pk1 greater than ph2 isn't it the ph2 we are looking the pk 2.2 which is greater than ph2 so if pk is greater than ph then protonation so this remain protonated so co remains protonated no deprotonation no chance for it this to as well because the least value was for pk1 2.2 which is more than ph2 this is 4.3 more than ph2 this is 9.7 more than ph2 so no deprotonation everything will be protonated so all protonated all protonated here so what is the net charge Plus one. So the net charge here is plus one. So at this particular state, let's say pH two, net charge plus one for this. Then let's increase the pH. Let's increase the pH to uh, let's say here four. pH four. Okay. So what we found in pH four. This pK value two point two is less than pH four, so it will be deprotonation here. So deprotonation where pK of what carboxylic acid. So deprotonation from the carboxylic acid. Deprotonation is done. Four point three is more than four. No deprotonation. Nine point seven. No deprotonation. So 
only one deprotonation. What is the net charge? Plus one was there, minus one here. So net charge is got it? Clear? Next thing, increase the pH to pH six. What happens in pH six? Let's write in the pH six. In pH six, what happens? Now this is pKa of one, which is less than pH six. So deprotonation. pK two of R group four point three, which is less than pH six. So a deprotonation here as well. From where R group deprotonation. So what happens here? Net charge. It was plus one here, minus one here, minus one here. So total net charge. Because plus one minus one cancel each other out, and we have minus one. And last thing, increase the pH to ten. pH ten. What we can see now in pH ten. pH ten is more than any of the pK, and we know that if pH is more than pKa, then deprotonation. pH is greater than pKa, deprotonation. And again, I am writing this. pK is greater than pH. Protonation. Okay. So again, deprotonation everywhere. Deprotonation here, here, and here. So ultimately, what we get? Zero here, minus one here, minus one here. So total charge of minus two. Now this is the journey of this amino acid charge, starting with plus one, then became zero. Then minus one, minus two. Among them, which is the sweeter ionic form? This one at pH four. So what we values will take one value up and one value down. So we'll take this pK here and this pK here. So for which pK it gets one to zero? pK one. For which pK got zero to minus one? pK four point three. So we'll take. 2.2 plus 4.3 divided by 2. That will be our pi. So that is given. C.25. C.25 will be the pi value of this titration. The pi value of this particular amino acid, carboxylic acid, a uh, glutamic acid. Okay. Got it.